uh, let's talk Ricky Hatton because he was on Five Live Sport um, last week on Friday night with uh, Colin Murray uh, talking about his comeback on November the 24th. Do you agree with his reasons for returning? Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I agree with his... It's tough to ask me to be mm, brief. I, I do agree completely with his reasons for returning because it's, as he said, it's to clear out what's inside my head and that's what we've said all along on this show for the last three years, Mike and I. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's hear from Kerry Kays, who is Hatton's former fitness trainer and he's been speaking to BBC Sports boxing writer Ben Durs. He needs a goal. When Ricky Hatton was undisciplined between fights, he was, the, he was undisciplined full stop. The day he started camp, the Monday morning he started camp, he was like a Buddhist monk. He needs a goal. And uh, that goal is setting himself a target, a boxing day. Because of that goal, he has to get in shape. And that's the type of animal Ricky is. Is it possible for Ricky to get his body into anything like the same shape in his mid-30s as it was when he was at his peak in his late 20s, especially no. given the layoff? No, it's obviously not. And Five Lives is well documented for following football, so I say this to a lot of people. If a footballer is worth 10, 15 million at the age of 25, why do they give him away free at the age of 35 when he's got 10 years more experience... The reason being he's not the man he used to be, obviously. He gets a little bit more niggly injuries. His timing, his reflexes, his stamina might not be what they were. No athlete at the age of 35 can be the athlete they were at 25. And that's whether you have a layoff or not, full stop. But he's got a lot of ring craft. He knows what he's doing. And um, people say it's dangerous. Well, you know, I think that's a little bit of a kick in the teeth to British Board of Boxing Control. He's got to have a medical to pass his exam. He's got to get his boxing licence. He's got to have a brain scan. He'll be monitored. There's doctors there on the night. Of course, um, boxing's dangerous, but football's dangerous. We saw recently with the Bolton player. Uh, rock climbing's dangerous. Flying's dangerous. Boxing is a dangerous sport that is fantastically controlled by the British Board of Boxing Control. And people say it's not healthy what he's going to do. Well, it's not healthy what he was doing. So, great. Good luck to Ricky. The widely held view uh, when Ricky used to yo-yo in, in weight between fights was that that was shortening his career. Was that necessarily the case? Absolutely, totally true. Of course it was shortening his career. And of course it wasn't the ideal way it was. And when his career was finished, everybody started giving him a hard time for yo-yo in between fights. But that's what people loved about him. That's why Manchester public and the, and the general public could relate to him. When Ricky said, I've had a pint with every one of my fans, he's absolutely true. <laughs> he did. And so what everyone loved about him started turning against him and saying that he shouldn't be doing it. But if he didn't do that, he wouldn't be the man he was. He wouldn't be the icon he was. So a lot of people don't know this. Ricky Hatton will tell you himself. One year, he had three fights, you know, and each time he got three to four stone off him. So in one year, he lost more than his body weight in three separate camps, by the way. <laughs> Kerry, you were you know, a big part of those halcyon days, you know, that, that incredible night at the MEN when he beat Costa Zoo. Uh, I was in the corner. Right through to when he lost to Floyd Mayweather. I mean, having yeah, seen... To that one as yeah. Well. Having seen those highs, how sad was it to see things fall apart like they did? Well, it was horrific. I mean, it was horrific. And... Ricky's the man. Ricky's the main man. It's all about Ricky Hatton and all the press is about Ricky Hatton and it should be about Ricky Hatton. But there was a lot of other people that Ricky Hatton got depressed, you know. There was a lot of others that Ricky Hatton got depressed. Billy Graham, myself, you know, Bobby Rimmer was there in the early days, you know, Ray Hatton, Carol Hatton, you know, Speaky. There was a lot, you know, there was a lot, a lot of people that were depressed, you know what I mean? It, was a lot of, it affected a lot of us, mate, and it, and it was so sad the way it ended up. It was so sad the way it ended up. That's very interesting, yeah. So, so one fighter's sort of downward spiral can bring an awful lot of people down with him, particularly uh, him and Billy Graham. I mean, their bond was particularly tight, wasn't it? Oh, it was unbelievable. You know, they, 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 they talked to each other without moving the lips. In that corner, you could see how Billy and Ricky knew what needed doing, and, 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 and Billy used to say to him in the corner, don't forget, I was in the corner, I was putting water in Ricky's mouth, so, you know, you could see that intimacy, you know, that bond... No trainer gets that close to his athlete. You know, you look at Ferguson with his players, they never get that close, tight, incredible bond for one minute in the middle of a terrible atrocity of war. And, you know, nobody knows the feeling in a, in, a, in, a, in a corner, especially when the fight's tight and there's so much on it. 
you know, it's an immense, an immense atmosphere. Do you think Ricky was ever the same without without Billy? Personally, no. Personally, no. And I, I can't think for Ricky. I can only talk about my experience, but I don't believe he was. Well, that was Kerry Kay's uh, talking to um, Ben Durs. Kerry Kay's uh, Hatton's former fitness trainer. It's such an interesting insight, isn't it, to, to hear what he's got to say about about Ricky Hatton? But reminder of how up and down his career was. Up and down in more ways than more ways than one. Thirty four title fights he had in a ten year period. And if you do some sort of mean on what Kerry's saying there, he possibly gained and lost about a hundred and seventy stone throughout his. Career. And what, what is amazing, I mentioned it at the top of this show about an hour ago, is how fantastic he looks at the moment. But more importantly, uh, uh, Ellie, uh, is his head is in yeah. the right place. And it's, it's about redemption. Yeah, it's, it's what goes on in his head, isn't it? And I, and I, I read somewhere that. somebody saying that, that Ricky is going to have, he's going to have issues. I mean, if you have mental health issues, you know, then it's, it's nothing to be ashamed of. But actually, Ricky, with boxing, without boxing, it's better when he's with boxing. It's better when he's with boxing. Although, although he did try it, remember in 2010, he announced, he had a press conference, I'm coming back. And then what happened was his family and, and the friends, the people that love him, Kerry mentioned most of them there, watched him in the gym and said, you're not coming back. So he shelved the plans, retired last July. He's back in the gym now, but it's different. He's done it differently. He spent four months getting his head and body right. It's no false dawn. This is genuine. However, what happens when he fights in November at the MEM, which, by the way, sold out inside 48 hours, 19,000 people. We'll wait to see. He's hugely loved, hugely Enormous. loved in, in this city as well, particularly.